Welcome to another Arduino Robot Projects video. In this video, we'll be demonstrating the functionality and talking through the schematic associated with this particular turret. This is version 2 of the single axis light chasing and light avoiding robot. If you haven't seen it, check out version 1 where I explain the previous version. But in this case, what has changed? from version 1. Well in version 1 I just had the two photo cells and when you shined a light it would either chase the light or it would avoid the light. It would be photovoric coming toward the light or photophobic moving itself away from the light. Since then I've added a SparkFun sound detector which enables me to shift between modes with the snap of a finger and the modes are indicated by the two separate, two different color LEDs. When the red lights are on, it's in photophobic mode, meaning that if I were to shine a light on one of these LEDs, it will turn itself away from the light. Whereas I could snap my fingers and it would change to the blue LEDs, now it's in photovoric or light chasing mode. If I were to shine a light, it would move itself toward the light. And let's see how that works. It's in photovoric or light chasing mode. When I shine a light on one of its cells, it should move toward that light. And it does. Now, with just the snap of the fingers, we should be able to change it so it avoids the light, or it's a photophobe, it's afraid of the light. The red LEDs come on, indicating it's in photophobe mode. And now, when I shine this light on, say, this light-dependent resistor, it should move away. And it does. It's afraid of the light now. It doesn't like it. Just so like I mentioned in version 1, I've been recently working with some Breitenberg Drive. His ideas talked about in his book called Vehicles. I'll be doing a series of videos on building some robots, two-wheel robots, that are much more in line with his thinking. Solely analog, no microcontroller. And very soon. But at the moment, it's working the way... I would want it to. It's extremely nice rather than having to comment in and out code to be able to shift between modes with just a snap of a finger. That's definitely an improvement. The version 3, it would be nice if when we run it away and it runs around, if it would have maybe a Hall Effect sensor to have a home position and so say I move it like this, once the light moves away, for it to go back to a home position and stay there. It's kind of like perturb it, but then it returns back, so it's got a more homeostatic effect to it. That'll be in version 3, which I'll do my best to build that and get a video of it up pretty quickly. In case someone wants to zoom in and see it up close, what's been changed on the breadboard, we'll do that. As far as the additional parts go, the breadboard's gotten more involved. Now we have the SparkFun sound detector, as well as the indicator LEDs and the photo cells. The main brains behind it, with the Arduino and the Adafruit motor shield, that's still the same. Everything else is pretty much the same. All I've done is, between version 1 and version 2, the turret setup's the same. All that has changed is the parts that have been added to the board. But let's look at the schematic, just in case, for those who may be interested. The schematic for... This version of the turret, it begins just like the other one did with the photonic voltage divider set up. That is unchanged. We have the photo cells connected to the Arduino 5 volt pin. As well as I've added in these decoupling capacitors, I added in two 2.2 microfarad electrolytics and 2.1 microfarad capacitors. Analog sampling is taking place on these 
to photo cells as well as through the SparkFun sound detector. And that's just to filter any of the noise that might be generated by the electronics of the Arduino and the motor shield. Uh, having a totally separate voltage regulator would probably be better if one was going continuing to add more analog components to this circuit. It's pretty much always a good idea to eventually separate out, supply the high side of analog circuitry with its own power supply and then just connect the ground to the microcontroller ground. But at the moment this is the current version and so we have the two photocells with their 1K basically protection resistors so that they are never able to source but so much current to keep them under their rated milliwattage. And then we have the adjustable 1K potentiometers using just two legs using them basically as a variable resistor running to analogs pin 0 and 1. Then we have the ground of the Arduino grounding to the breadboard as well as we have the SparkFun sound detector and connect its ground to the Arduino ground. It's being powered by, well, the 5 volt pin from the Arduino. There's the high line. And then I'm using the envelope pin in order to get that range of analog values. And it's connected to, well, analog pin 3 on the Arduino. And then I have the indicator LEDs and I have them connected to digital pins 6, 7, 8 and 9. As well as the motor, the motor driving the turret is connected to motor port 1 on the version 2 of the Adafruit motor shield. If there's any questions about that schematic and the layout, just let me know. I'll be more than happy to help in any way I can. I hope this video has been interesting and perhaps even helpful to those who are thinking about building a light seeking or light avoiding turret as well as you could add any sort of analog signal to it that you can remotely influence with light or smell or vibration or magnetism etc and use similar code to achieve this sort of effect with a single axis turret setup. Um, the code for this will be in the first comment of the description and I look forward to version 3. Until next time.